What's going on everybody? It's your boy Zamboni. I am an herbalist and astrologer here in New York City and it's time to talk about the astrology of the week ahead. So um, it really has been a very big year and we have made it to the end of the year. This is our last week in 2020. We've seen a lot of things change. Um, We have sort of seen the uh, iconoclast of the previous empire and we have seen that crumbling and we've seen um, some power grabs and we've seen a lot of uh, major changes taking place in our own personal lives and it's it's in society at large in a uh, local level at a nation level on a global level we have seen all of these things um, major changes taking place we've seen the end of the old thing and then um, just last week we saw the arrival of the new thing we saw saturn and jupiter Um, conjoining in Aquarius. And this is a very big deal, right? This is sort of like pulling us in the new direction toward a new reality, toward a new idea uh, or paradigm of truth. And so this week, what we're going to do is we're just going to really sort of expand that some more. We're going to get used to this kind of situation and we're going to see what's really going on here. Um, There's kind of the major stuff that's going to be going on in 2021 and 22 is um, there's a square between Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. And um, this week, we're going to really sort of get a taste of that. And um, really sort of we're we're sort, sort of beginning to get into the rhythm of this thing. So um, let's let's talk about it a little more specifically than that. So um, the first thing that's really going to go on this week is the moon in Cancer. The, there's a full moon in Cancer. And so, um, you know, the full moon is always a very emotional time. It's when um, the tides are really high, the the water is really pulled up really, really big. Um, People get kind of crazy during this time. Werewolves come out. You know, we're all familiar with um, the things that the full moon is. The full moon in Cancer. So this is the moon in domicile, right? This is the moon. So um, in domicile or um, the moon rules this area or the moon is at home here. So when the moon wants to do moon things, which are um, things like nurturing or nourishing or caretaking or um, anything that has to do with safety and security, especially on an emotional or a bodily level, um, this is a really uh, major, this is what the moon does, right? This is what the moon cares about. And so when it comes time for the moon to do moon things, then in Cancer, this is a very comfortable position for the moon to be. And the moon is able to do moon things from this position very easily. Now, the the trouble that we've been running into for about three years is that Saturn has been in Capricorn. So every time the moon wants to go into Cancer, then it has to oppose Saturn in Capricorn. That has been a bummer for about three years now. Now, Saturn has just moved into Aquarius. And so this is our first moon in Cancer where we don't have to oppose Saturn. Oh my goodness, what a joy it is to not have to oppose Saturn all of the damn time. This is great. So, um, but the thing is, we're not quite to great yet. You know, um, Mars is still in Aries. And so the moon still has to square Mars in Aries. And this is not our Um, least favorite Mars anymore. We've had some least favorite Mars this year. This year has been a really rough year for all of this Mars and Aries retrograde, fucking shit up. It's been not fun, right? For a lot of folks. Um, And we're still there, right? We're, we're, We're not past that point. Mars is now moving forward and is now Um, you know, gaining some speed and is getting back up to normal Mars speed and is just kind of able to do normal Mars stuff isn't exactly square to Saturn right now. And that's pretty dope. The the square to net or um, to Pluto last week, um, (laughs) I kind of underestimated that that was a little bigger, um, at least for me than uh, than I maybe sort of said it was last week. But, um, you know, so there's there's still a bunch of this kind of like Mars volatility and uh, blood boiling, you know, ragey kind of stuff that's still um, here and present. Mars still hasn't gotten his due yet. And, um, so the moon in the full moon in cancer is going to square that Mars. Um, it's not square exactly on that day. You know, the next day is when it'll square it, but it's a, it's a fairly important influence. And, um, it's also going to oppose Mercury who's in Capricorn. Um, and Mercury is not as all like, um, you know, kill them until they die from it like Mars will be a lot of times, but um, Mercury is definitely happy to argue about things. Mercury is a lawyer, right? Uh, Mercury wants to um, debate about it and sort of, um, you know, the, the whole devil's advocate thing um, shows up here, especially like put, Mar- or put Mercury into Capricorn, right? What, what 
tarot card is associated with Capricorn, right? So, um, you know, there's a certain amount of um, competition and contest, especially around words and things that might show up here. And so with the full moon, um, this is a great time to get in an argument with someone for sure. Um, as the full moon always is, and then, uh, you know, put Mer Mars and Mercury there at the same time. It's just like, it's a little bit more than the uh, moon in Cancer really, like, if we want nice moon in Cancer, we're just like, not quite there yet. We're almost there. Keep, keep waiting. We're almost there. Next month, it's going to be so much better um, for, for the moon in Cancer. But right now, the moon in Cancer is still in a little bit of a rough position. Then what's going to happen is after the full moon, and then the moon is still full, right? The moon is like going to be a big, bright moon for all week, basically. But especially for the next 45 degrees, it's about three days. Um, the moon is going to move forward and is going to square Mars. Then is going to move into Aquarius, where it's going to uh, conjoin Saturn and then conjoin Jupiter. Then it's going to square Uranus. So this is a very busy moon, which is going to be hanging out with malefics. You know, um, the moon is going to likely... So what... You know, what we're going to do here is we're going to get into the Saturn and Uranus square and we're going to really look at. So Saturn wants to talk about order and wants to talk about uh, stability and uh, clarity and these kinds of things. Right. We're doing the thing and um, there's a there's a hierarchy uh, there. Some orders have been set. If you would just do them, then we would have an orderly society. Right. That's where where Saturn is coming from. Uranus in Taurus is not about that life. Uranus is going to try and disrupt some things. Uranus is going to be sort of, um, you know, trying to poke holes in things in the name of innovation, but also in the name of like, fuck your status quo. Right. And um, so there, so seeing the moon come to um, conjoin Saturn and square Uranus, this is the major drama of 2021 and 22 and so this is the the kind of beginning of that and this is what i mean by we're sort of coming to know what the rhythm is of this time so what's going to happen now for the next you know forever or whatever is um when the moon comes into a fixed sign then it's going to sort of have to interact with all this stuff and so that's what's going to happen after the moon is in cancer the moon's going to move into aquarius with this, which is a fixed sign and we're going to feel all of these kinds of things now What's also going to be happening at the same time is Venus in Sagittarius is going to be conjunct the south node. So um, the south node tends to do less of whatever it touches. It wants to purge things. It wants to make smaller. It can be a spiritualizing influence sometimes because it wants to get away from a material reality in whatever way it can. Um, and so Venus who is like the pleasure principle. A lot of times I think about Venus as being like the things that make it delicious to live in the world, right? Um, stopping and smelling the roses, for example, right? Just like the sweet smell of the rose makes it worth it to live in, the, in a body. So where you have a nose, like your nose can do this job and it's beautiful, right? Um, this is a lot of what I like to think about Venus as uh, trying to accomplish in the sky or in a chart. And so to have Venus on the south node like that is really, um, it's just so, it, it wants to, you know, do less of the Venus stuff. It sort of uh, sucks it out a little bit. There, there's a, like a, a withering kind of sensation here. At the same time, Venus is going to be square to Neptune in Pisces. And a square to Neptune um, is immensely confounding or confusing. It's a time when um, things just don't make a lot of sense sometimes. And so the Venus stuff is going to be confused and maybe not hitting the mark while at the same time um, the malefics and Mercury are really sort of like getting a lot of play here. And there's a lot of sort of structural influence and a lot of, um, you know, it, it feels like some finger wagging might go on here and it doesn't feel like a lot of fun yet, you know. Um, so we are working toward the fun things and the comfort and the stability that the moon in Cancer, for example, is going to provide. Um, and I look forward to talking with uh, Patreon about this uh, a little more deeply. But um, but we're not there this week. We're just at a point this week where, you know, there's still some rocking and rolling that needs to, to go on here. And we need to figure out what the new thing is going to be. And we need to generate this new world. So this is a very important moment, um, but it's not a particularly comfortable one. And so um, if you've been making plans, if you've been thinking 
about how you're going to sort of um, operate in the new world that is um, described by Saturn and Jupiter conjunct in Aquarius, then um, now is a good time to start making those steps. And it's not um, super easy and it's not fun necessarily in the soil for example, is not super, it, it's kind of rocky, right? But it's what we have to deal with and we're here. And so it's time to sort of think about how to generate the world that it is that we want to create, especially with this new air triplicity in mind. And so um, that's what I'm here to, to help us do, you know, to talk about what it is, to describe what it is and to offer some suggestions as to, um, you know, how we can live our best lives during this time. And so that's what I'm doing on Patreon. I would love to see you there on Patreon. We do group intentions every week as well. Um, it's a really fun time to be able to uh, like talk to each one of you and to uh, you know get, get some positivity and intention, uh, intentional living in our lives and out into the world. And so it's a really nice time. Um, I also do, you know, forecasts and, and stuff and just like ways of thinking about um, time and magic and all of these kinds of things. So I would love to see you on the Patreon. Also, I do readings. I, I also accept tips if you have been enjoying this. Thank you so much to everyone who supports. Y'all really make it possible for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's what we're doing this week. So I look forward to going on this journey together with y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here with me. I'll see you next time.